and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where it does indeed look like I'm going to be asked to crack a cryptic t crossword today. When I opened the link, I was I was a bit nonplussed. It does look exactly like a crossword, but this is not a crossword. I'm assured it's not. It's a pentominous puzzle um, by Elliot Grant. Now, Elliot has appeared on the channel before, and if I remember rightly, it was a beautiful, beautiful logic problem that we did. Uh, and this puzzle on screen first appeared on gmpuzzles.com, which is a well, it's a website I wholeheartedly recommend. It's a wonderful, wonderful source of handcrafted content. So um, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, this has been, as I say, it's been recommended to us a couple of times, and the testing reports say it's beautiful. And I should say to everybody up front, you're not allowed to bifurcate. Uh, that's often the... Um, the temptation, I suppose, with pentominous puzzles is you just start throwing in pentominoes trying to force the solution. Uh, but this does have a logical path, apparently, as you'd expect on Cracking the Cryptic. So hopefully I will be able to find it. Um, now, do I need to tell you about anything? Um, not really. Um, just uh, if you're a patron of the channel, please do try the Looney Tunes Sudoku Hunt. Lots and lots of correct solutions we've had for that and lots and lots of uh, nice feedback as well. And we have uh, more puzzle hunts or more Sudoku hunts in the offing very soon. It's quite exciting times on the channel. Lots going on. Um, and if you do enjoy the channel, please do consider subscribing. Um, I said, said this a little bit recently in the hope that we get 400,000 subscribers and we can make this video where, where we answer community questions. We might be there by now. Not quite, I don't think. Um, and yeah, if you, if, you, if you do enjoy the channel, please do help us to get towards that magic number. Um, now, with all that said, let's have a look at the rules of this. It's standard pentominous, so if you are familiar with pentominous puzzles, you will know exactly what to do. Um, but basically, we have to divide the white cells in this grid uh, into pentominoes. Um, a pentomino is just a five cell region of some shape. So that's the simplest region, I suppose. That is a five cell shape. We could put that shape in. Uh, and then what we'd have to do is to make so sure the next shape we put in was not the same as this, uh, allowing for, uh, well, that includes rotations and reflections. So you could not then do this because these two shapes could could sit on top of one another, basically. If you, were, if you imagine you cut them out of a piece of paper, could you put one directly on top of the other? Yes, you could. Uh, and therefore that is not allowed. So don't do it. Um, what else is not allowed? Um, something like, let's do something, see if we can do something a bit more complicated. Uh, I'm probably going to fail dramatically to do this. What about that and that there? There's many reasons this isn't allowed, but one of them, in fact, let's, let's even include the ability to or the rotational point and the reflection point. So these two shapes, again, are considered the same because basically if you rotate this one and reflect it, you could map it directly on top of this shape. So that's not allowed. We could not put these pentominoes next to one another. Now, the other reason this wouldn't work, of course, is that this little white cell here could not be part of any pentomino if we tried to put two pentominoes in like this, and that would also break. We've got to have to fill all of the white cells just with pentominoes. I will try and remember in editing uh, to put a little card on the screen showing you all the different, I think there are 12 types of pentominoes and they all are normally allocated a letter to identify them. So for example, this little one here looks a bit like an X and is referred to as the X pentomino. But I think you know what to do. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. And the first thing I'm tempted to do here is to highlight these corners because in each case you can see that whatever the pentomino this is part of it has to grow to a size of five so it's definitely going to have to pick up that cell which means all of these four are all definitely in the same pentomino shape the same is going to be true down there the same is going to be true down there so we can immediately shade in some some pentomino cells but what we don't know now is what this does next does it go that way or does it go that way Either way, it's definitely forming a P pentomino, although that does look more like a Q. Um, it's referred to as a P because once we've reflected it, you can see it would look like a P. Um, hmm, okay. So maybe we 
draw those in whatever's obviously whatever pentomino this is it's going to have to join to that now that's okay this is interesting now this yellow domino cannot join to purple because if it did it would create a septomino or something uh, a, a, a thing of size seven well a thing of size seven is not a thing of size five so this is going to have to go downwards um and then we're going to have to draw, draw in something there look probably can make this red it's never going to reach those reds down there and that could join to that and form a u pentomino or it could wend its way down the grid um, and go like that and form a z i suppose or a z depending on how you like to refer to that shape or that letter those two have got to be the same Right, this again, this green here, this green domino can't connect to the blue domino because if it did, uh, it's going to be a set domino. So that green's going to go that way. Oh, right, now the geometry is interesting, look, because what we can't do now with this red is attach it to green because it would be a hexomino, it would be of size six. So the red, in order to get to size five, the only thing it can do is some somehow some way it's going to have to hit yellow once red hits yellow it becomes a, a pentomino so that is a pentomino we have found and now this cell can only be part of purple so that we, we are actually away here now this cell has to go has to grow to at least size five so it's going to take these three cells and this cell is definitely going to join to yellow as well because it must so this is actually quite a good start. Normally with pentomino puzzles, they can be very difficult to make any sort of progress with, but we're actually doing okay here. Now, oh, I was about to say that one. Well, I suppose that cell has to join green because it can join nothing else. But now green could become an F by joining this one, or it could become a Y by joining this one. And then that would force the blue to go that way. Uh, right, this square is interesting because that cannot join to yellow because if it did, yellow would be of size 6 again. It can't form a pentomino in a domino, so that's going to have to join to blue. Now, those two squares there must be the same, mustn't they? So we can make those red with impunity, I think. I do enjoy these puzzles, I have to say. They are very especially that you know the handmade ones the ones that had a lot of thought into their design they're always interesting and they're just a bit different from the classic sudoku stuff that we do now i think i can get away with making this one green down here i don't think it's going to get close enough to that green to cause any clashing issues um so what do we do next this cell can't join blue because it would become a hexomino, so that's going to have to be green. Um, that cell, I suppose, can't join green, because that would again create a hexomino, so this little domino here can be coloured in a different colour. And it is a different colour, because it can't join blue or green down there without becoming too large. Same is true there. There's lots of these little dominoes we're actually able to construct here. I'll, I'll, I'll risk... No, I can make that green again. That's going to be okay. So this blue is getting a bit penned in. Hmm. Okay, one thing we can't do here is put blue here. Because... Look what happens if we do. If we make this into a T, tetra, T pentomino, I should say, what's this square going to belong to? Well, it's only got one option now. It can't join blue. Blue's already replete. It's satisfied. It's got all its conditions met. So it could only join yellow. And to join yellow creates a T on top of a T. And we can't do that. That would be an overdose of T's. Um, so this square is not blue. Now that doesn't actually mean we know what blue is. Blue could go that way or that way still, but it does mean this square is not blue and therefore that one is joining to purple. 
Oh, and this is getting dangerous now because that shape, the blue shape and the purple shape are the same after rotation and reflection. So we've got to make sure, for example, if the blue grew here, the purple couldn't be there then because they would be two Vs. Similarly, if that one was taken, that would be a Y and then we couldn't take that one with purple. Um, okay, what about this square now? This square now is two, it can't join purple without creating a hexomino, so that's going to turn green. Now this red can't join yellow, so it's going to have to grow that way. There's a lot, there's quite a lot going on here. Because now I'm wondering about this cell, for example. This cell now can't join red, so it's going to have to be a new colour that's going to have to come down at least those three cells. So you can actually put a few things into this grid, even though it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to. Uh, now that square is interesting now, because this square, what can it join to? It can't make a pentomino out of the white squares that are left. It can't join purple without creating a hexomino, and it can't join yellow without creating a hexomino. So that can only belong to green, and that gives us a three cell green region. Um, oh dear, <laughs> I'm stuck. Uh, so this green could go up. And then every, yeah, everything gets very cluttered. But And this is where the bifurcators will just immediately get to a solution very quickly. But we're not going to do that. We are going to try and figure it out logically. Um, this square can't be purple and it can't be green. So this is a new color coming this way. This... This is also a new colour, I suppose, isn't it? Because this one can't join green. It can't join red and it can't join red here. So those two are in the same region as well. There's probably going to be one cell here that we can figure out what it's got to do. And that's going to allow us to break the puzzle open. I just have to spot it. <laughs> Everything looks really quite constrained, though, at this point. The other thing we can do is to count, I suppose. Where is the best place to count? I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether we should be looking at the top of the grid. Maybe or the bottom of the grid. I think the bottom of the grid, I'm going to have to count more cells because I don't quite know what's going on over there. Let's count these squares. Those cells there, the, out, the cells I've outlined in blue. Because what we might find is that we get a perfect, a number that's divisible by five. In which case we would know that we had to fill these cells. Well, it still wouldn't be completely clear what we have to do. But what I'm trying to do is to work out how, how these boundaries are treated here. What has to cross these boundaries? Um, so let's count anyway. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 26. Now, 26 is interesting, isn't it? Because that is not divisible by 5. So that means in this top area here, we could form five complete pentominoes. But the sixth pentomino, let's say it was this cell here. In fact, it can't be this cell here. That's interesting straight away. If we formed a perfect set of five pentominoes from those uh, cells there, the ones I've just outlined. We know that's 25 cells because altogether, if I include that one, it's 26 cells. Oops. Ah. But this would be the 26th cell and it would have to take 
four cells beneath it in order to create a pentomino. And now we can see that it's just nonsense because this, this is already part of two cells here, so it definitely can't pick up four cells beneath it. So we have to... Hmm, let me just think about this. So we're going to have to shuffle things across this boundary and this boundary in such a way that things make sense. Now... Let's just think about this. So if if this, I, actually I might use the pen tool here. I could use the pen tool, that would be sensible, wouldn't it? Is that going to allow me to put, hang on a second. Yeah, that does. Oh, this is lovely. Okay, so let's imagine this green thing doesn't cross the boundary. If it doesn't cross the boundary, then we know that we've got, we, we must form five pentominoes. Well, I want you to go back to colouring. I need to form five pentominoes perfectly out of these cells. And then this cell is going to be the 26th cell, and it's going to have to pick up four cells beneath it. So it's going to have to pick up one, two, three, four, well, one, two, three, four. It would be forced to be. A Y pentomino. Now, is that okay or not? Is the question. And the answer is I don't know. If that was a Y, that would be a V. It all gets very cluttered. Um, bobbins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything else we can do here to try and put more pressure on this? I'm going to get rid of that pencil mark. That turned out to be a bit of a red herring, I think. This cell has got to be part of something else, doesn't it? So that cell has to join there. But the problem with this again is that it could join here. Ah, no, 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 no. Right, this is, this is good. <laughs> I shouldn't have got rid of my X. I shouldn't have got rid of my X because this is now, this is now seriously beautiful. Let us look at some serious beauty. Go back to pen tool, put that in, go back to colors and go back to what we just did. What I said was, if I put an X here, what happens? Boom, 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 boom. I have to make those cells into five pentominoes because I've got 26 cells above this imaginary line and this is the 26th cell. So we're going to have to cross this border and this is going to have to pick up four more cells to get to a count of 30. Well look now, it's impossible to do it now because these are both dominoes. So the purple forms is in the same pentomino and the yellow is in, pen in the same pentomino. So how do I grow this by exactly four cells? I could pick up that cell, that cell, and that cell. But the moment I take this cell, this cell has become a problem. So that won't work. So this X is wrong and I'm unmaking it. And now, so now we know that that must extend to here. At least that must be green, which means this square can no longer be green. So that must be red, which means this square is no longer red. So that must be purple which means this square is no longer purple up here. So that must be yellow because it can't be green. Now, what does it mean? So we now know that, we now know what, what's this doing now? This is really getting difficult. This one, could take those oh no maybe that's not the place to look what i really want to know is what this one does don't i so we're at a, we're at a count of we're at a count of 26 that's going to be 27 we're nowhere near 30 so we have to cross this boundary that's the point isn't it what you can't do is isolate there because if you isolate there, the 26 cells that are 
in these cells. 26 is not divisible by 5, so that's not going to be a perfect set of pentominoes. We know that we're going to be able to grow this one to create a 27th. That's still not 30, is it? We're going to have to get to 30. Well, we can take that square. That's 28. But now I can't take these two squares as well to get to 30 because this shape here is too big. So there is no way that this is uh, not, a, well, that this x is correct. And if that x is not correct, uh, let's get rid of it. We can therefore extend the yellow upwards. And if we extend the yellow upwards, we've now, I think, we're going to get a domino effect. That's become a V. This yellow now can't connect there because it would make a 6L region. So we create a Z. Um, what do we connect this purple to now? The answer is it's locked in, isn't it? The only way it can create a five cell region is if it's a V. So we've got a V here, then a Z, then a V, then a P. This now is gonna have to pick up that cell. Um, this is gonna have to be purple. One, two, three. Well, this purple is a real problem. It, need, it needs to get to a size five. And the only way it can do that is if it picks up both of those. That's penned this one in. So it must take those and be a T. Uh, can we keep this going? Yeah, maybe. Oh, well, this is a Y. So if that's green, that's a Y connected to a Y. So that's going to have to be a T. Therefore, that cell's got to be a Y. This square square's got to be a green, making that an F. This square's got to be blue, making that a P. Um, and we've just got to figure out the top of the grid and we're good to go, aren't we? So how do we do that? If this was a, ah, well, we've got a Y here. So that can't be a Y. So that's got to be a V. That's got to be a Y. That's got to be an, what's that, an N. And that's got to be a Y. And I think we haven't connected anything incorrectly there. I did try very hard not to make a ricket. I'm going to change the color of those reds down there because they're a bit less clear than if I made them blue. Um, and what a, it's just a beautiful puzzle, isn't it? It's a beautiful puzzle because you can, you can effectively solve it very logically and very clearly, even though it looks like a sort of bifurcators, either a treat or a nightmare, depending on your views of the world. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a really gorgeous logic problem. Um, and I have to say, that's the sort of puzzle that I like to solve. So thanks so much for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.